Puerto Escondido, Oaxaca, Mexico. We recently were lucky enough to have the opportunity to live there for almost six months. In today's video, we're gonna to talk to you about the most frequently asked question we get, and that is, would you ever go back? Hi everyone, we're Aaron and Lori Miller. This is Plan Free, the channel that illustrates slow travel and a location independent lifestyle. We've been lucky enough to be able to be doing this for 12 years and counting now. The question today is, and often is, would we return to Puerto Escondido anytime soon? Would you? You know, Puerto Escondido has a lot of things to like and we very much enjoyed our time there mm -hmm. because we thrive in beach lifestyle towns. Uh, generally speaking, you know, we've lived here and we've lived in Tamarindo before, among other beach towns, and I generally lose 15 pounds every time we go there just because we can become so active. I'm yeah. happier because the climate, and we're often out in the sun, it's yeah. warm, the food quality is very good, and we yeah. just settle into a simple, happy lifestyle. And that was certainly the case in Puerto Escondido, so I do like the lifestyle a lot. Let's talk about the internet really quick though. <laughs> Uh, Lori's experience was... Was fine. Yeah. I, I seriously, I could make phone calls, I could um, email, I could run our businesses back in Edmonton and... You could send a fax or a telegram. <laughs> no problem. I found it a little bit uh, frustrating, I would say. Now, most of the time it was sufficient for doing the basic things like Lori talked about. Mm -hmm. But, you know, whenever it came time to do any uploading or downloading or streaming, like live calls were out of the question. Um, so from that standpoint, I would call it, generally speaking, insufficient. Now, if you're renting yeah. a place or you're living in a place in Puerto Escondido that has Starlink internet, you're probably good to go. Some of the internet cafes also provide a good alternative. But I would say overall, the general internet connection you're gonna get when you grab an Airbnb is gonna be frustrating if you're doing it, trying to do any of the things that I discussed. Yeah, we heard it all the time on Facebook groups with people we connected with, people we met, everybody had a problem with the internet, except for me, I guess. <laughs> mm -hmm. well, let's talk about the community a little bit. We met a lot of nice people when we were in Puerto Escondido, all of which I would probably categorize as acquaintances. Mm -hmm. Puerto Escondido is very touristy and it's seasonal, so a large portion of the people that you're gonna come across are somewhat transient. They're coming and they're going. Yeah. You know, we found that especially at the gym that we joined, we met a lot of nice people. Month later, two weeks later, five days later, they're gone. We did meet uh, a few people that are living there full time that are very nice people, pleasant to be around, but I would say that was a small percentage of the amount of people that we became acquainted with. So from the standpoint of community, I think I would probably prefer if I could get somewhere where it was a more stable community. Now, having said that, keep in mind that I guess Lori and I would be categorized as somewhat transient because we were in and out of there in six months. So yeah. it's not a not a knock or a judgment necessarily, more of an observation. Just an observation, absolutely. There's, there's lots of locals, the Mexican people working there and have their life in Puerto Escondido that are obviously permanent fixtures there, locals. But then there's also a good expat community that are starting to call Puerto Escondido home full-time year-round. Or maybe they pop back to Canada or the USA for sh a short stay, but Puerto's really their main home. So that, that nucleus of expats is starting to grow too. So some people really love that uh, and other people want to avoid that and want more local vibe. So you kind of get a mix in Puerto Escondido. Mm -hmm. From a food standpoint, the experience there was very comfortable because we had access oh, yeah. to a lot of products and services in the grocery stores and then we had a wide myriad of different uh, restaurants available to us. Yeah. In addition to the famous regional Oaxaca cuisine, there were a lot of restaurants from other geographical regions represented and we never ran out of options mm -hmm. as far as food goes. It never became stale, it was always interesting right till the end. In fact, I missed several of the restaurants that are in Puerto Escondido. Yes, the ease of life. He's, he's talking about the variety, any cuisine, nationality almost that you want was the, was available. If you're tired of cooking at home, it was just a quick, due to the size of Puerto Escondido, it was really quick to zip out and just get whatever you want. You want falafel, you want sushi, it was all available and so awesome. All available. And then the product availability in the stores, once you find out where to go, you could get everything from your basic meats and vegetables right down to spirulina powder. Mm -hmm. <laughs> 
If you like this video so far, now's a great time to press the like button. Click subscribe <laughs> if you'd like to see more videos like this from us and the blue bell icon so you always know when the next video is coming out. And leave us a comment. We love those. We answer them all personally. Go for it. Mm -hmm. Another factor that I that I found uh, was positive in Puerto Escondido that would make me consider returning mm -hmm. was the fact that they had a good amount of hummingbirds. And you may or may <laughs> not know, but I'm a bona fide hummingbird nerd. If you love hummingbirds too, you can check out this channel here. Mm -hmm. But uh, you know, we could set up a couple of hummingbird feeders outside of our windows and have regular visitors. And I think that traditionally we had about three different species, but in the migratory seasons, we had a couple more. And that always is a good constant source of amusement for me. So I always prefer a spot that has hummingbirds over one that doesn't. Now, in addition to that, you know, there were times a year where you could see out into the ocean fairly easily with the naked eye, not to mention binoculars, huge whales moving through there yeah. in the migratory season. And that was also pretty cool. Very cool. I guess what we're trying to paint a picture of here is that the overall lifestyle for us in Puerto Escondido was very relaxed yet positive. It was, uh, became very routine, which was great because we were getting things done but at a nice relaxed pace it was well balanced with getting outside mm -hmm. we like to body surf a lot we um, were body surfing probably five days a week it's an excellent location for that so as you can see from what we're saying so far the positives are starting to drastically outweigh the negatives as far as whether we would return or not I'm not even sure there probably there are negatives. Oh, um, the dogs barking. Oh, the roosters crowing. Oh, the music blaring. I mean, there's a few things, but that's that's a foreign country for you. That's Mexico for you. Once you've traveled a little bit, you kind of get used to that kind of stuff, and you adjust. You bring your earplugs and you rent a place um, that's a little further off the beaten path, perhaps. But so if we could boil it down to whether we would return or not. For me personally, the world is a big wide world and I have 70 other locations that I would like to try first before returning. Mm. But you know what, the ease of life, I cannot deny how easy it was to get in and out of that location. Um, just the climate, the cost of food, the availability of food, life came easy. Gym, body surf, people to meet, dog shelters to volunteer tier at. There's just so much that I would probably return. Yeah, so for me, uh, we're going to keep running around the world to to <laughs> satisfy Lori's desires. I could return to Puerto Escondido tomorrow and be happy for probably four months out of the year easy. I'd probably like to live in, let's say, three different locations uh, mm -hmm. throughout the year, but Puerto Escondido could certainly occupy three to four months of the year for me easily. Now, the fact that we're Mexican residents will factor into increasing the chance that we return to Puerto Escondido, but... Unlike some of the other locations that we lived in, Puerto Escondido is definitely a candidate for us to return to. It has the most of all of what we love. Mm -hmm. We encourage you to watch this video next. If you'd like to help our channel grow for free, maybe watch three more of our videos. We'll see you again soon in the next one. Bye for now. Thanks for watching everyone. This is Plan Free, the channel that illustrates a location independent lifestyle and often slow travel and the light and...